Mark from the ATV guys, and we've got a treat for you today because I got a hold of somebody at BRP uh, Can Am. Uh, this gentleman is a little bit of a the, the race go to race person over there because the Can Am is actually winning races all, ac all across the globe. And I never got a chance, even though I used to work for BRP or Can Am dealers, never got a chance to know about the racing program over there. And this guy is is the guy that's in the know he knows all of these uh he knows all of these things he's the one taking care of that and i and his name is simon belzil hello simon hello Marc -Andre. how are you today i'm doing very well thank you simon you're, you're pretty much the, the the race guru over there at the at canada what do you do exactly i'm a project leader uh mainly i mean uh we have we have a good team at the racing department at BRP. I mean, I'm I'm not alone. Uh, I have some good colleagues and friends uh, uh, working there. But mainly on my side as a project leader, my goal is to uh, help on the technical side mainly um, uh, the race teams that we have to support them and make sure they have all they need. And um, from there, you know, I'm I'm like the middle guy in between, like the race teams, the engineering department, and uh, our own uh, racing department. So you're kind of a you're kind of a deluxe gopher. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess uh, that's a way to say it. But uh, yeah, my, my my role is there to to help out. Uh, you know, like I said, all the racers and make sure that uh, they have all they need to to perform at uh, the highest level. Man, and and all of this, you know, the reason why I wanted to talk to you is just so people people st know. A little bit of what's going on behind behind the scenes uh, at racing. I, I'm lucky that I, I got you guys. There, there's a racing department in every every single manufacturer who uh, of the higher end machines. Uh, but what what is it exactly that Can Am does with racers? I know you have factory racers and you have privateers. What's what's the what's the relationship between the factory and the privateers? Uh, towards you what do you do for these guys well on, on the canam side it's a little bit different than on the skidoo side uh but mainly um on the canam side i mean our uh most of our racers on the southwest of the united states uh competing in the best in the desert score uh koh we just talked about so mainly we provide them with uh with some kind of uh, equipment uh parts uh, on the financial side to, to help them to perform, but, uh, not just on the technical side, but on the marketing side, uh, uh, they have some support to, um, to help us out. Uh, but on my side, uh, you know, mainly is to, uh, to make sure that they have all the equipment they need to compete at the highest level. Uh, we do test session with them. Um, I generally go to most of the races to support them and, and get, uh, the feedback and uh, come back with some kind of information, data acquisition. Uh, we look into this and then uh, we try to improve from there to get ready and better for the next race. All right, cool. Uh, now, right now, because of COVID, everything is pretty much, excuse my French, a bit screwed up all over the world. You can't really do the same job as you've been doing before because travel restrictions and all this stuff. But there's two races that are still going on hard. Uh, we're talking about Dakar and uh, KOH, which is actually being run right now as we're speaking. Uh, I'd like to know, what's the difference between these two races? What is a Dakar? What is KOH? And what's the implication of BRP with these races? Well, uh, Dakar, it's like, a, it's like a, it's a marathon race. It's a very big race. Uh, quickly, it's 8,000 kilometers of racing, uh, 12 days in pretty much of racing in 13 days. So it's like really the, the toughest rally endurance race in the world. While on the other side, when you have like the KOH race, which is like uh, uh, a very, very difficult terrain, like uh, going through the rocks, uh, rock crawling in some uh, high speed desert. So that one is specifically like the, the toughest one day race, pretty much. If you if you if you want to compare both uh, both events. Okay, so Dakar is a big rally, eight thousand kilometers, twelve days. Koh, 
is race, 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 one day, all kinds of different terrains. Am I, am I getting it right? Yep, that's, uh, you got it. Okay, great. Like, by, if we could go uh, a little bit more in depth, um, now there's some results. Uh, Canam is doing good, I think, on KOH right now. Yesterday there was yeah, a Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. I mean, we just, uh, yesterday was the, the, the desert uh, race section of it. Like, uh, mainly, like, there's a, a rock crawling event, and then there's a desert race as well. So yesterday, uh, our racers uh, finished first and second. Kyle Cheney won the race um, on his uh, Canon Maverick X3, and Phil Blurton uh, also finished. I uh, finished second on his side with on his uh, Canon Maverick X3 as well. So it was uh, it was a good showing, and we're looking forward for Thursday, which is uh, today actually are the qualifying for the rock crawling event. That's going to be uh, the final will be held on Thursday. Okay, good. I'll try and tune in. Uh, there's a, there's a website where people can tune in to see to see that race. You know. I... Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually uh, pretty neat. You can log into uh, Ultra Four uh, Racing dot com website, and uh, they have um, they have a live feed uh, that they show like, and it's not only for side by side, but all the the, the passionate about uh, motorcycle ATV. Uh, Uh, side by side trucks and jeeps. I mean, uh, everything off road is uh, that's that's a very very nice event out there. Thirty uh, plus thousand people. I don't know how they deal with COVID, but uh, it's it's running right now. What what's the difference between an X3 uh, an X3 uh, Maverick XDS RR you can buy at your local dealership and a machine? Can, can you take one of these machines and go? Let's say racing KOH or racing a pro series with one of these. What what does it imply? And do you know a little bit of the cost? Is it very very expensive to go take an X3 and go race? Mainly to to race uh, in the states, um, especially like per se uh, King of the Hammer. Uh, it's it's about the chassis regulations. Uh, you know they have some kind of insurance uh, that are very specific. So so you have to build like a full Uh, solid cage with um, with solid doors, you know that uh, that that you need to have. But mainly, our racers are using uh, stock engine, stock drivetrain, um, the suspension. Uh, let's say the A arms, uh, trailing arms uh, might be uh, reinforced, uh, and they're running uh, for the rock crawling event. They're running 35 inch tires. 35. Which, yeah, which is we, we run, uh, I mean, some of them are racing with 32s, don't get me wrong, but um, just like what we have on our Maverick uh, X3 XRC, it comes with 32 inch tires as well. And uh, you, you will see uh, that, you, you know, we have some units down there that uh, are just like the showroom floor. And, uh, but, uh, but mainly on the cage, that's a regulation you have to, to be ready for it. And, uh, Little things like security uh, aspect or extinguisher um, and uh, window window nets and things like that. The four four point harness, I think. Yeah, yeah, obviously, and but that's what we have now on our on our XRC model. It comes with uh, a four point harness. Yeah, I, I didn't get a I get I, I didn't get a chance to get to try an XRC. The only one I, I tried was last year 2020's X. Uh, XDS uh, 64-inch, uh, the, the RR model. Uh, that one has standard belts. <laughs> so, Simon, the question I wanted to ask you, why can't you buy a race-ready machine that's already up to, up to par with all these security things and safety and all this stuff? So you can buy a machine straight from your dealer that's uh, homologated to race. That's a very good question, Marc Andre. I mean, uh, we do have uh, we do have that on snowmobile. I mean, you can buy our Skidoo 600 RS and go right away on the racetrack. I mean, um, on the side by side, I feel that uh, we're not there yet. I mean, uh, obviously, the, the 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 racing is is growing, but um, it's uh, like snowmobile it's been part of our dna we've been doing that for a long time on on the side by side i feel like uh, the market is so wide i mean uh, 
I, I think it's, it, it could be something to consider one day or the other. Uh, I think it could be, could be something good to have eventually, but I just feel like the market is not maybe necessary for that at this time. A Maverick X3 R, R, R would be <laughs> awesome. I like that. I like that. I mean, <laughs> I, honestly, it would, be, uh, it would be great for us uh, on the racing department to have such a project. And um, I, I think we could do some, some very, very amazing things. All right, then. Next question. I'm, I'm wondering, are, are we talking almost world domination of a Canadian brand? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want uh, to, to look uh, funny, but uh, <laughs> we got to be proud of this. I mean, uh, for me, winning the Dakar and winning KOH uh, proves that Can-Am has the most uh, reliable and performant vehicle and that uh, our engineering de department are doing an uh, outstanding uh, job at making a vehicle that is not just the funniest vehicle to drive, but the most performant and reliable vehicle, you know, out of the industry. So, uh, yes, if, you, if that's 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 uh, the good point. And so, so it's it's not a rumor. It, it's it's fact. <laughs> you can't you can't really brag about facts. I know I'm a little bit of a fanboy here. Uh, I own Polaris and a few other brand of vehicles. My my heart's a little bit on Canon side. I work for the company too, so in the, in the past, but it, it's. It's, it's something cool, isn't it? It's like these guys from Quebec sitting in the, sitting behind a desk, design a machine. They, they, they design it, they build it, and go racing, and this happens. <laughs> yeah, the facts are there. I mean, you just said it. I mean, for me, winning the Dakar in uh, um, KOH uh, proves it. How many times did you guys win Dakar? It was the fourth time, I mean, since uh, we are uh, involved. I mean, there's been UTVs uh, only since pretty much just uh, five years overall, you know, total for that. But uh, it's been four years in a row that uh, we've been winning Dakar. And not only this year we got the win, but we got the, the, the top 11 position, you know. So that, that's, uh, that, that shows a big statement on how our vehicle is uh, performant and reliable. But was there only can ends in the race? One to 11? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can check the results on the website and you will see uh, other competitors uh, so humble are you eh? you won't talk about the other guys but now it, it, all, all that's fine listen Simon I appreciate the time you took time you gotta go and uh, I keep you I keep you on here all day long so thanks a lot <laughs> for being with us today Simon uh, if you guys want more information about the Can-Am uh, racing, racing program, you can find the information, I think, on, on Can-Am, uh, Can-Am's website, uh, Simon? Uh, some information are in there. Uh, mainly the dealers will be able to uh, tell you about the racer program uh, that we have on place. Yep. So if you buy, if you buy a Can-Am machine and you, you, you want to go out racing, your dealers, your first, uh, your first contact into the... Uh, into the racing world. Is that, is that what, I'm, what I understand? That's correct. Yeah, that's exactly. All right. Simon, thank you very much. And uh, I, wish, I wish all the, the Can-Am family to, to have more wins this year. And uh, maybe, maybe in 2021 or 2022, I'll be attending at least something like KOH or something like that. Thanks a lot, uh, Simon. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. Bye. All right. Well, this is it for today. So if you like what we're doing, Please don't hesitate to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, which is the ATV guys, and join our Jonas on the Nation, our Facebook group, which is Canadian ATV UTV Nation. I'm Mark from the ATV guys, and I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>